And we're live! Woohoo! Welcome along, everybody. Welcome along to Adorama TV, to this live stream. If you're watching the recording, welcome along to the recording as well. We'd love to hear from you. If you're in the comments, put a, a comment in. Tell me where you're watching from. Where are you? How is it where you are? It's, it's glorious here. It's a really nice summer's evening. Perfect evening for being outside and taking photos. So uh, let me introduce myself for those that don't know me. Hello! My name's Gavin Hoey. I'm one of the presenters here on Adorama. Ten years. Ten years, a couple of days ago. Wow! I can't believe it. Ten years of Adorama TV uh, and we're live. That's, that's how far we've moved in ten years. So if you're wondering why this isn't as slick as the video from ten years ago, it's because it's live. That's kind of what happens. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to do a few checks first of all. Uh, are we okay in the technical department? I have four thumbs up. There's only two of them. That's a good thing, isn't it? So thank you very much for joining me. I'm not here on my own. I have a few people with me. I've got Freya on the super switcher. You can't see her or hear her. And I have Sam on the comments. You can hear her. Yeah, you can, you can hear me. <laughs> can't see me though. <laughs> Fantastic. Good people over. from uh, all over the place. Have we? Where, where have yeah, we got? So we've got, just reading a few here, Argentina. Uh, we've got Alabama, we've got uh, Denmark, and I know that we've got my friend Petra in Sweden. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no personal favours here. Personal favours. That's, that's not how um, well. And Scotland, uh, Mexico, Berlin, uh, New York, obviously. And um, we also know that Seth is there. Hey, Seth! Hey, Seth! <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Oh, that's great. Okay, so what are we going to do in this live stream? Well, uh, what do we call it? We came up with a really snappy title that we kind of made Adorama friendly, which is Awful Background, Awesome Photos. Now, I want to be clear right from the start, that's a bit of alliteration. The background and the location isn't really awful. It's not great, I'll admit, but it's, it's, it's not awful. And the photos, they're not going to be awesome. But if you can take that into account, we'll be pretty good because we have this place. So this is um, a bit of a bit of a, a awesome. Let's have a wide shot. There we go. There. You are. Oh, that's not a wide shot, is it? Honestly, trainee mixer. There we go. <laughs> She's got it. She's got it. <laughs> Look at that wide shot. So uh, it's not quite as big as it looks. It's about 20 feet square, although half of it is taken up with live stream equipment. This is where we're going to be shooting for the next hour and um, it's it's okay but it's not 
not what I'd like if I was choosing a location. And that's kind of my point. What I want to do with this is to try and uh, take away the location and towards the end, we'll try and work with the location a little bit. So that's, that's my theory. What I'd like you to do, can, can, I, I can't keep doing this. Can we go down? down? <laughs> What I'd like you to do is help me out in the comments. So Sam is moderating the comments. If you've got a question, stick it in the comments. If you've got a suggestion about photography, what you'd like me to try, pop it in the comments. We might give it a go, unless it's smoke, in which case I can't do that today. Long story. So uh, that's the kind of the idea. Right, OK, um, I should get a camera and take some photos because we're on a tight timeline. Let's get this all set up and we'll just sort a few things out on my laptop as well so i can see what's going on okay cool and that button right there all righty so i'm back there we go <laughs> so i've got a camera i'm tethered in today i am using uh this camera right here which is not going to focus because i've got my eyes on it is the olympus om system om1 which is the very first time i've used this camera for a photo shoot what could possibly go wrong yeah. Can't okay. see a problem with that at all. No. Okay. <laughs> what was I thinking? And I have an awesome model. Give it up for Chloe. Woo, Chloe. As you can see, Chloe is dressed for the occasion. I think if you're going to do a, an awful location, one thing you can try and do is make your model look amazing. The opposite of the location. You either go with it and have a, a look that matches the style and feel of the place you're in, or you go the complete opposite, which is what we've done because Chloe just looks amazing. So then there's a, a couple of options. So photographically, how am I going to approach this? Well, the first way I'm going to do it is to say, is the lighting in here absolutely what I want? Can I work with the existing light? If I can, well, that's it. I'm not going to bother doing any more work. The existing light is great, therefore work with it. I'm going to try it, but spoiler alert, it's, it's not going to be great. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see how it goes. So I'm going to use aperture priority mode. I'm going to go, what have I got? I've got a 45 millimeter f1.2. So let's try using something like f1.4, fairly wide open. OK, and let's just see what we get. That sounds great, dragging it across the concrete. Yeah, OK. Chloe, I'm just going to take a little shot like this. Here we go. Fantastic. We'll just see what we get. We're going to make sure that the tethering works. It all pops onto the screen. Oh, look at that. I mean, Chloe makes everywhere look better, doesn't she, really? It, it's, I mean, that's, that's great. Can we stop there? I think we should stop. That, that'll do. Six minutes. Thanks for watching. Ah, that's pretty good. OK, so, so that wasn't an audio problem. That was me. <clears throat> I got this. So I'm going to put a little bit over to the side. So I'm going to put a little bit of dead space on the uh, right of the screen. Why am I doing that? Because there's a picture in picture there, so you can see what's going on. I think about my audience. That's how kind and caring we are. Okay, so let's try vertical as well. Now, the 45 millimeter lens that I'm using equates to a 90 millimeter on a full frame camera and more like a sort of 75 ish on an APS-C camera. So I have to get quite a way back, and because I'm so far back, it's not a particularly telephoto lens. I don't get a massively shallow depth of field, even at f1.2, which is where I currently am. Even though I was going to do f1.4. Yeah, that's live for you. Um, but nonetheless, that kind of looks quite nice. That, that, it's OK. So these are the shots we have to beat lighting wise, because if you're going to use your own lighting, if you're going to bring lighting into a scene, it has to be better than what's already there. Otherwise, kind of why you're bothering. That's that's kind of my thinking. OK, so we've got some stock, safe, sensible images in the bank. Good work, Chloe. Uh, I'm going to check in with our moderators there. Are we OK? All good? Yeah, everything's good. OK. Um, this is live, by the way. If you are watching this live, don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to Adorama. I'm sure you are. Uh, but the share button, the more people you can tell, the, the more we'll get coming along and the better it is. Right, OK, so that was OK. I think it's time to break out the flash and do some flash work. So flash, I've got a whole bunch of flashes I could do. I'll get one. Hang on a second. I'll get one for you. Hold on. Here we go. Right. There you go. 
one flash. Okay, so this is my portable flash kit. Can you tell where it came from? I'll try not to bash the microphone as we go somewhere. Okay, <laughs> let's hope nothing falls out when I open it. Oh, we're good. Okay, so this is how I pack my little portable flash kit. Uh, I have uh, an Explore 400 and I have an Evolve 200 Pro. And I can actually, with a bit of uh, crafty knife work, you can actually cut a little bit down here in the, the 400 case and get the 200 in. So this is what I use, this is what I, I travel with if I'm going out on location. Uh, and I can get both of the, the flashes in here. So that's a really good little kit if you're trying to travel portable. Two flashes, one case. That's a really good thing. So that's what we're using. Those are my spare ones in case the, uh, the main ones fail on me. Always have a backup plan. We've got a couple of questions. Yes, far away. So, um, Cole asked, can we try a fill card first to see how much that adds? I don't no. know if you bought a reflector with you. I didn't did bring you? a reflector. And, and that's a really good question, actually, Carl. The answer is not Carl. a lot, because for a reflector to work, you need to be able to bounce in light that is kind of brighter than where your model is. And the lighting, unless I put it, I suppose I could hold it way up here and bounce it in from there. That might actually work because the sun is, that would have, yeah, that would have worked, Carl. That's a good point. Um, but if I was just to do it in the shade, it, it really wouldn't do a great deal. Uh, Dylan asked, is this location near your home? Is it near my home? Yeah, yeah, it, it's, um, it's on the farm. Uh, what did the estate agents describe this bit as? A dilapidated barn. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. were spot on for once. <laughs> they were. Put it, put it this way. A few years ago, they would have been a roof. <laughs> it's gone. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've made it safe, but we haven't done much more than that. Uh, right, Chloe, do you want to just sort of stand, see any of the white paint? Just stand on the white paint there. Smash it. Let's get rid of that. Okay. We good? Okay. Just checking in with the technical team. So what I want to do is to effectively take the background away. The background is okay and we will work with it, but for now I'm just going to remove it. That's perhaps the easiest way to work with an awful background, hide it completely. And there's two ways I can do it. I'm going to start with this way, which is with lighting. So Chloe, let's just uh, grab a camera and we're just going to take a little sort of Sample shot just so we've got a reference picture. Here we go. Okay, so this is what the ambient light looks like. It's all right, isn't it? Not bad. That'll do. Why bother doing any more? I want to get rid of the background. So what I'm actually going to do is try and work this out with a bit of flash. So I'm going to turn my flash on. I'm going to put my flash, my camera rather, into manual mode. Flash sync speed for me, 250th of a second. I'll go for F8, middle of the road, and ISO 200, native ISO. Okay, let's just, well, let's just take a picture without flash. That's what we normally do in the studio. Let's just do that out here as well. And if I do that, I'm going to get this. Ta-da! I think that's my cursor. Yes. <laughs> well, there's some weird white thing on the screen. Okay, let's change that because otherwise think everybody thinks we've crashed. There we go. <laughs> oh God, are they gone? <laughs> so that is the same exposure, but without any flash firing. What I'm going to do is put some flash onto Chloe. There we go. So effectively, if I don't put any light on the background, the background will be what you just saw, black. Easy then. So all we need to do is like Chloe for F8. Chloe, I'm going to reach in towards your chin. Here we go. Pointing my flash meter. I tell you what, do you want to hold that camera for me? <clears throat> Nobody. Can everybody just pause the video just for, just for a second? Just press pause. Right, you can, you can unpause it now. That's brilliant. Nobody, then no one saw me do that. <clears throat> I forgot to turn it on. Some things don't change, do they? <laughs> <laughs> We've just made a video, Adorama TV, coming out well, next week, uh, where I discuss that very issue. <sighs> Ten years, and I'm still doing the same damn mistake. So a few people have asked why you're using that size of, um, of, of Oxybox. Yep, the 70 centimetre, or some inches. Yeah. Uh, it's because that's my favourite. 
and it's no more than that. It's also really lightweight, it's really durable, I've used it for years, I'm really comfortable using it. And that's really the best reason you can have, is it's your favourite, you know it, you're happy with it. I could use a strip box, I could use a, a I probably could use a, an umbrella. What you're comfortable with. Okay. Right, here we go Chloe. So I've set the flash, I know the flash is going to work, I know it's going to be absolutely fine, it's going to give me that black background. Oh, wait a minute. What happened? Quite a few things have gone wrong there, haven't they, really? First of all, I don't have a black background and I've got green. Where did that come from? That wasn't there before. Was that there before and I just didn't notice? Let me go back a shot. Nope. Did the lighting change? Possibly. Did I move? I might have moved. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I moved. That's what it is. There you go. Right, okay, that is technically the correct exposure, whatever that means. But it, I haven't got that black background that I was expecting. Where has my black background disappeared to? Well, the short answer, it's not there because the flash has lit Chloe and then travelled past her and lit the background. So if I want the black background to, to be exist, to make this grim background disappear, I'm going to get my light and move it closer to Chloe. And really close to Chloe. How's that? Okay, didn't hit you? Okay. To quote the wonderful Daniel Norton, if you're going to hit your model, use a soft box because... I love that one, that's my favourite. It's soft, by the way. That's what it is. <laughs> I know. He's, he thinks it's funny, just, you know, humouring. Okay, so putting my light really close is going to affect things. Okay, Chloe, here we go. The first thing it's going to affect is... <laughs> the exposure on Chloe, <laughs> because if you move a light close to something, what happens? It becomes effectively brighter. All right, what power are we on? We are on one eighth power. How many stops do you reckon that is? Three, four, should we guess? One eighth power to one sixteenth power, one stop. One sixteenth power to one thirty second power, two stop. One sixteenth to one, that's one thirty second, one sixty fourth, three. Three? Sam says three. Okay, here we go. Sam might be right. Let's have a little look. Yeah, it's so annoying, isn't it? Well, Sam's always right. Well, we say that. I'm looking at uh, an over bright confidence monitor, which is giving me incorrect confidence. I'm going to pop this near your chin. Yeah, you're a third out, Sam. So, so close. So, so close. But um, don't worry about it. That's okay. You'll, you'll get there. A few more live streams. You'll get the hang of it. So, you can see how close this is. It's what? It's, it's less than however wide my fingers are. So it's probably, what, six inches from Chloe? It's really close because of something called the inverse square law. Which camera am I on? That one, the inverse square law. So it drops off very quickly and the exposure for six inches is different to the exposure for several feet, which makes the background go basically black. Okay, let's spin you around to face me, Chloe. Oh, no. Did you, see, did you see she moved? <laughs> okay, here we go. Great stuff. Great, love it. I'm going to go vertical. Fantastic. So the background is nearly black. I've got a hint of black coming through. Um, I, could, I could work with that. I could leave it. Should we work it? We'll work. Hey, hold that for me, Chloe. That's a good picture. Let's, let's have that one. Love that one. What have you got? Let's have a look. Yes. <laughs> that product photography. You've definitely got a product there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a grid on the, uh, the light. And the grid is going to direct the light forward and restrict the light to the sides. So Chloe's going to stay roughly in the same place. Thank you very much. The grid, however, will remove a tiny bit of light. I say a tiny bit, it can be up to a stop. Okay, Chloe, I'm going to pop this near your chin. Yeah, okay. Chloe, if you look at this light, can you see the white at all? Only there. Only there. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take that, whoops, back to F8. For those that can't see, I'll, I will bring it closer. Which camera are we going to go? That one? Okay, cool. There it is. So that's what I'm looking at. This is what I'm seeing. I've set my ISO to 200, my shutter speed to 250th on the flash meter, 
and the flash meter is telling me the light falling on it is at an f8 aperture so that's what i'm looking at and if you want to see this bit as well because i know people love to see the, the both bits of it here we go i'm at 1 16th power okay uh, 1 16th power and for somebody who did ask yes my it's still head, held together with duct tape but it works it's working fine okay cool Righty-ho, let's just see where we are. There we go. Great. And Chloe, you're going to turn ever so slightly towards the light for me. Great. So we can make this, this background go basically black. And although I'm not doing any Photoshop in this section, or I can leave in the light, because I know it's black all around it, and just paint it black with a paintbrush. Job done. I've got a question. Far away. Sorry, I was. I forgot. You, We're live, aren't we? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Juan said, "How about adding some separation uh, to the right hand because it blends a little too much with the black background?" Juan, that is. I like your thinking, Juan. Let's do that. Okay, let's grab a second light, which I have not set up at all. So this is going to be awesomely fun. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So very quick lighting setup, which. <laughs> okay, so I've got a whole bunch of bits here, and I'm going to be putting it in the Evolve 2 headed uh, thing here, which it only fits one way round. There we go. So that is my light in there. And then we're going to pop this onto there. Lovely. Okay. And then we're going to find. Ah! I knew I had one somewhere. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, there we go. Little little standard reflector. That's going to fit into there. Smart. And then we'll put it on a light stand. Okay, so one, just for you. One separation light. Ideally, I would use a softbox. Guess what I didn't pack another one of when I had all day to set up. Yeah. You got it. Okay, so this has to be on... Let's go with that one. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to zoom this in. That's not really zoomed in, is it? Uh, yeah, we can kind of see that. It's on its own separate group. It's on group B. So it's on a, a different group entirely to the main light. So in other words, I can set these lights independently of each other and they're not going to interfere with each other. They can be at different powers. So I had a, a couple of questions from Nick, um, and it's about whether you take extra kit on location in case something breaks down. That is a really good question, Nick. I am the most paranoid photographer. I'm probably not. I know a lot of photographers. We're all paranoid. Uh, so I tend to have a bag of kit that I know I'm going to use. And then in the back of my car, I'll have a little sort of spare bag for oh dear it's gone horribly wrong which i hope i never have to open and usually do so i'll often have spares of batteries and transmitters and you know spare flashes things that if they fail i couldn't do the shoot at all but other things you just have to go with the flow however that being said trust me if you could see the kit that i <laughs> we do for these live streams yeah <laughs> okay that's great let's just turn the modeling lamp off there we go that is on B, so we're going to turn B on and we're going to have it pretty low. 1 128th power, something like that. Here we go. And it should just give us a little kiss of light just on Chloe's shoulder. See that little tiny speck of light on the shoulder? I don't really want to go much brighter than that, but I do want to move this light. Get a little bit more light into Chloe's eyes. So Chloe, you're going to turn a little this way. Great stuff. And separation lights are, oh, I mean, well, literally whole videos on separation lights. And they are very, very personal to how people like to set them up, where people like to put them. The thing you need to remember, if you like it, then you did it right. That's all you have to remember. Okay, one, there you go. Two, job done. Okay, great, that's fantastic. I like a little bit of a question, so that's, that's good. Throw me off my stride a bit. That's what we want to do on these lives. <laughs> right, okay, so I removed the awful background by massively underexposing it and making it go more or less black. 
we've worked with it a bit. We're going to remove it in a, an entirely different way. So the way we're going to remove it this time is with this. You might want to step out of the way. Yeah, OK. Ta-da! OK, so this is the Manfrotto Easy Frame with the Sage, Vintage Sage cover. And um, it is 2 meters by 2.3 meters, something like that, which is, well, 3 meters is 10 feet, so it's less than that. It's about 8 feet by something. It's quite big. And if you're thinking, yeah, but I'm not going to take that on a location, the whole thing fits in this box. So all of that fits in this tiny little case. Uh, it, I was going to say it doesn't weigh anything, that's because there's nothing in it. Ignore that. So it's really light. Of course it's really light. It's all out. I've got a comment, actually, while you're in mid-flow. A comment? Yeah, from a JME Photo Art said, Hello, you answered a question for a shoot I had suggesting the 50mm 1.8 for low light. Ten years later, I still shoot cabaret shows in London. Thanks for the advice. Wow. Oh, that's really nice. Well done. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's nuts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I wonder if, if you still, did you say you still got the 50 mil as well? I mean, it's one of those lenses that you just keep. They're yeah, cheap, reliable. Everybody should have one. Okay, so, oh, let's lose the uh, reflector. I don't need the, I don't need the grid. Okay, so I've got a, a background that is quite nice. It's going to complement Chloe's look pretty well. Chloe, if you just take a little baby step that way, that's it, dead center, perfect. Yes, he still has it. Hey! <laughs> oh, I'm also going to swap over lenses. Let's swap out the lenses, because I was still on the 45mm f1.2, and I didn't need to be necessarily. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, there you go. Buy a good lens, it'll last you longer than buying a good camera. Lenses, you can keep using the lenses over and over again. There's quite a few comments about um, uh, when they saw the location that they didn't think it was awful <laughs> and you should be using it so I, I know we're coming to that aren't we we are coming to that yes we will we will yeah um yeah if you missed the very beginning uh, awful and awesome there was a literative kind of thing on the the title it's not awful it's not brilliant it's not awesome they're not okay they're not bad you know that's yeah, yeah. it's kind of like that i think it's fine. so um let's just go with the the ambient light the light is super flat we are 727 more or less here um so it's it's the evening the sun is setting it's kind of nice soft lighting here we go chloe oh wow hang on a second <laughs> just need to adjust my, my aperture that might have been a little bit soft now if you like it soft and you do it three times it becomes your style and that's absolutely fine, but I didn't really intend to do that. That was a little bit of a, an error. Okay. Yeah, lovely. There we go. So that's what the ambient light is looking at. It looks really strong colored background, doesn't it? Um, I don't mind that. That's all right. I, I've taken a lot worse. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. <laughs> the, what you can't see happening in the background is hilarious. The, the technical staff are getting leaves dropped on top of them. At least it's leaves is not part of the barn. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. <laughs> Seth said, uh, that location needs a zombie. <laughs> well, now, Seth, yes. You see, and he's got a point. Every location is perfect for a certain type of photography. And that, that's the key, isn't it? It's matching your photography to where you want to shoot. So for some people, this is a dream location. Yeah, imagine it full of smoke with zombies coming out of it. And it's it, awesome. It would be fantastic. OK, and then imagine trying to do a bridal party here with trip hazards and broken glass and all sorts of other things that we had to clear up before the live started. You know, it's, it's everything has a place. All right, OK. Let's just see where we are. Oh, right, where am I? So I'm going to switch back to manual mode. I'm going to switch back to my flash sync speed, 250th of a second, ISO 200. Let's go with F8 again. Why not? OK, and let's do the usual no flash and see what we get. No flash gives me 
No picture. Okay, that's good. Let's try with a little bit of flash. I should meter this out. I should do it properly. The temptation is kind of, yeah, just go for it. What the heck? Uh, but if you're going to do it, do it properly. Chloe, I'm going to pop this near your chin, pointing it back at the lights. Uh, Mary Irene said, your dress is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that's Chloe that was aimed at. Yes, oh, yes, okay. guys. Yeah. <laughs> just check it. Okay. Right, okay. Here we go. Test shot, see what we're getting. Alrighty, okay, so, yeah, okay, so we should have something a bit different to the ambient light. The ambient light gave us that. The flash, whoops, wrong way, nope, got there, G gives us this. So, a different look and feel. We get a little bit more shadow, which I quite like, because I like shadow, I like contrast. Notice we can go down as far as the feet, because this background has a little skirt, which, if I flip it down all the way, there we go. It means that I can go vertical and include Chloe's feet, which is really nice. And of course, I don't have to. There we go. So if you have a pop-up background, any kind of background where you can transport it, you can set up in the worst of conditions and no one's going to know. Awesome. Let's just move the flash because that's quite a nice, safe, sensible position. And we're about halfway through. So if you're, if you're watching us, if you're just joining us, hello, welcome along to the live stream from Adorama TV. Click on the share button, click on the like button. Let people know we're here, which is kind of good. Okay, here we go. Right, I've moved the light. I haven't re-metered the light. I'm just gonna see what actually comes in. Hold on. Okay, does that look a little bit bright? It looks a bit bright to me. However, if that's what you wanted, Nailed it. Okay, let's see. F10, yeah. Okay, so two thirds of a stop. Too bright. F8, there we go. Okay. Out of interest, does anybody else in the, the comments use a flash meter? Have we got flash meter users? Are you TTL or are you kind of just see what happens? Trial and error. Well, I love working with Chloe. I haven't told her to do anything. It's fantastic. Just point her in the right direction and off she goes. <laughs> it's superb. I've got another question. Yeah. Uh, it's from Nick. Uh, do you tether on location? Uh, good question, Nick. The answer is sometimes. It depends. It depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, do is, is there a client that needs to see what you're doing? Is it going to be useful in those circumstances? Is it practical? Some places on location, it, it's just not practical. You're, you're moving around too much. Uh, if it's like this, where we're in a static zone, I prefer tethering, but every case is unique. So I've had some answers for your question whether people use the flash meter. Oh, yes. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, always use a flash meter. Uh, no, no flash meters, trial and error. It's a lot of fun. Uh, guess and check gang, like that. <laughs> uh, I use a meter in the studio but not outside. Uh, Sekonic, um copying you. <laughs> uh, meter since my one-on-one uh, -on -one with you. Brilliant. Uh, flash meter Brilliant. and the uh, guess a meter. <laughs> That's yes, good. Guess a meter, I like that. <laughs> Definitely a flash meter user, light meter most of the time. Uh, yeah, so uh, mostly, back. but yeah, a few trial and errors, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I'm glad people still use the flash meter. It's, it, it definitely has a, a place in modern photography for many reasons. And I kind of like using it. Okay. Right, Chloe, let's just see where we are. Here we go. Popping this near your chin. Okay, F6.3, F6.3, that didn't go up at all. 7.1, it did that time. F8, F8, okay. Okay, and I've got to come down a little bit lower. Fantastic. Okay, this is perhaps the most important picture you need to take during a shoot. And in fact, it looks even better if you do this. Here we go. Let's just actually make it a little bit brighter. 
Do you want me to turn that off? New camera. Oh, yeah, new camera. <laughs> They've reversed the aperture and the shutter speed dials. They haven't reversed it. I customized it on my old Olympus and haven't customized it back. This picture is really important. This is going to tell you for future reference where everything was. So, so useful for your own reference, for social media, for a whole bunch of reasons. Just having that gives you a great option to refer back to. Okay. Here we go. Must admit, I am loving the eye detect with this camera. This is so much better. Great stuff. Okay, that's fun. Okay, how are we doing? Pretty good, any questions? Good, I'll keep going. Okie dokie. So that kind of works quite nicely. I like that, but let's see if we can mix it up a little bit. So let's, let's get you out of that chair. How long have we got? We've got 25 to go, wow. And let's move this out of the way. So we've disguised the awful backgrounds. We've sort of worked with it, but in ambient only. Let's try and sort of take it up a notch. You didn't see that. No one saw that. It was really like, awful. <laughs> but it's out of the way. That's the main thing. Okay. So we're going to try and make it a bit more interesting and work with the scene. So this will be an evolving experience. I've deliberately not over planned this particular bit because I wanted to see what happens. Uh, and also I'd like you to get involved. So if you've got a, a suggestion, pop it in the comments. Good to know. Right then, Chloe, how are we going to do this? I think we're going to start with probably, well, let's start where we began. Let's sort of start here and see if we can make it better than the ambient shot. That seems like a good idea. Let's do that. Okay. So where am I going to put the light? I'm going to put the light in front, something like that. Safe and sensible. That's where photographers like to start. And it's not a bad idea. Get something in the bag, something safe, something sensible. Work it from there. Okay. So let's grab our flash meter. Okay, Chloe, I'm just going to pop this near your chin. F7.1. Well, that's pretty close to F8, so I can get that to F8. F8. Smashed it. Let's bring it in so everybody can see. Here we go. If I get my face in front of it, it won't detect my face and... Or anything else as it turns out. There we are. <laughs> okay, good. So next, we're going to take a little test shot and just see how we go. So Chloe, I'm just going to work my way from this side. And then we're going to try this side. And then you can get the feeling how this is going to go. Okay, let's have a little look. Okay, that one's a little bit contrasty, but I don't know, anybody have a preference of side? It's, it's quite nice walking around. As photographers, we often just sort of take the same shot. We go, okay, I'm going to start there and see how it goes. Walk around, have a little look. I quite like the contrast. I'm, I'm a sucker for contrast. So I'm going to go for the contrasty shot. However, I prefer the background of the first shot. So that's what that's typical photographers. I like that, but I want it to be completely different. You've had a few comments about your C stand. Yes. They're saying that it's pointing in the wrong oh. direction. <laughs> the, the C stand police are in, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Seth, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't going to name names. Okay, look, 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 look. We, can, we can do better. We can do better than this. Okay. Okay. Frey, you got the remote camera. Can you point it at the, uh, the leg? I've given Frey a challenge. Here it is. Look at it. Oh, look. Somebody got a toy for Christmas. There you go. Look at that. Okay. Sandbag. So, uh, sandbagging your lights. There's no breeze here. We're in a pretty sheltered spot. Uh, there is relatively little chance of it falling over. I'm not booming the light out today. However, I'm clumsy. If you're at all worried, 
pop the sandbag on the big leg and this is the important bit give it a good kick if it does that you're okay that's good that is doing its job if it does i can't really get it to do it it's a bit short but if it does that and it just sort of sits on the floor it's not doing its job all you're doing is holding the world down and in that case you're actually holding the light stand down onto the world so seth said for the record i said nothing about the c stand <laughs> <laughs> Tell him it wasn't me, Sam. <laughs> ah. It's true. True it story. Is, it is true. I have learned everything about C-stands from Seth. I'm not going to deny it. And I forgot most of it. <laughs> okay. But okay, there we go. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we were taking pictures. Here we go. So, little kind of a moment to review where I am. Okay, there's a little contrasty. So, uh, you can move backwards. Just take a little step. There you go. Watch out for any sharp pointy things. Don't want to do any injuries. Wham, straight in. Okay, so this is really nice. So what I've got is light, which is contrasty, because that's what I like. I've got a little kiss of light onto that background. Not much, just a little hint of light back there. And that's kind of nice. I like that a lot. And that works okay. All right, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can make it a bit more interesting. Let's mix it up a little bit more. Let's move around. Okay, Chloe, we're going to move around. So I'm going to guess this used to be the gate of the barn. Yeah, I wouldn't lean on it, though. <laughs> the walls are, um, yeah, <laughs> dilapidated. The estate agents were right. Okay, so... I think this is going to work as a better background. I, I quite like the, there's a symmetrical pattern if I want to shoot in the front. There is a fairly plain background if I want to go to the side. Let's find out. Okie dokie. Right. I haven't checked with my light meter. I sh should have done. We'll have a little look. How's that look? It's not far off. And to be fair, that makes sense because I haven't really moved the distance. I've sort of instinctively put it, it's exactly right, F8. I've instinctively put it about the same distance away. It's still the same light modifier. Nothing's really changed. As long as you keep it the same distance from your subject, the amount of light should be roughly the same. Okay. That's better. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Chloe, just turn towards the light. There you go. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so we'll do one more like this and we're going to mix it up. So, uh, if you have a suggestion, do put it in the comments, but I'm going to keep going and you can... Ah, you can fine. Um, I'm going to change the aperture. So at the moment, we've got F8 depth of field. The background is dark. It's separated and it's, it's there. I quite like that. Let's just check I've got everything. Let's go have a look at my proper. Okay, that's fine. That's sharp, it's in focus, but the background is, but I can see the pattern of the wood. So I'd like that to be a little bit softer than that. Now I can do that by changing my aperture, but I wanna go quite soft, so I'm actually gonna really change it. I'm contemplating how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go find my 45 mil, here we go. Let's get the 45mm f1.2. If you're going to do it, then, you know, go for it. So there's been a few uh, comments about using the um, door. The door? Yes. To the left, which is actually it's my favourite bit. But oh, this if, door? Yeah, that's going to be in the garden at some point. Is I it? Think. Yeah, like, oh, what's through the other side? On the mystery door. Yeah, like that. Yeah, a bit like Narnia, but I think it'll be full of nettles and brambles if it's in a garden. Turn that round a little bit. How's that? There we go. Sam has a lot of ideas that I don't know anything about. It's probably not a bad idea, really. Need to know basics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go for f1.4, which is my favourite place to be with this particular lens. Everything else is exactly the same as it was before. I wonder if you can predict what's going to happen. Okay, what's going to happen is this. Whoa, what just happened? So my goal with this lens was to make that background a little less sharp, okay? I mean, 
you can tell I've nailed the eyes. The background is definitely blurry. Okay, so everything is working except for... Uh, I seem to have removed Chloe's skin. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, might, I could probably fix it in Photoshop. Yeah, we'll fix it in Photoshop. It'll be fine. Hmm, okay, let's not do that. So I need to fix this. How am I going to fix it? There's a couple of ways I could fix this problem. How would you approach this? How would you fix the overexposure? I'm just going to fix it and then we'll see what people suggest. Um, okay. How are we doing? Any comments? Uh, there's some comments, um, but not... Oh, less power on the light. That's less power on Jeff the light. Said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but also a comment from Gino to say, what? No props today. There are some props, but... I haven't really used them, have no, I? No, not yet, yeah. no. <laughs> okay. There we Have some props. Sam will be annoyed with me if I don't use the props yeah. he's already got. So, so we've got um, lots of suggestions. Increase the shutter, um, ND, HSS, waiting for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Reduce power of light and increase shutter speed. ND filter or high speed sync. Um, raise shutter speed. Right. There's, yeah, yeah, I mean, there lots. are some really good suggestions and they are all actually probably mostly all correct. And they would all work in their own way. It depends what you want to do. Okay, I, I like the idea of reducing the flash power. So let's take it down to one 128th power. Here we go. Okie dokie. That gives me that, I mean, which is, you know, that's okay. It looks a lot like the ambient light. In fact, what is the ambient light? Let's find out. Okay, Chloe, here we go. No flash is this. This is the ambient light. Okay, it's, it's all right, but that background is a bit too bright. I'd like that background to be a bit darker. So somebody said about the flash sync speed. Okay, this should be fun. Let's see if I can get the new camera to show you that. I wonder how I'd do it. Oh, wait. Ah, okay. Right. This this camera? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, there it is. Uh, hopefully you can... Oh, it's gone off. <laughs> hopefully you can see that says 250th of a second. And... Oh, this, this is slick, isn't it? Hang on. It would help if I can see it as well. Okay, there we go. It's definitely changing. As I change it, it's changing. And if I go the other way, I get to 250... And it look... It, I can't go past, basically. I'm stuck at 250th of a second. I can go under, but I can't go over. Arr! So that's my flash sync speed. That is the limit, and it limits me because I have the transmitter on my camera. That's, that's physically telling the camera, you're using flash, and the flat camera says, okay, I won't go past my flash sync speed limit. So if I want to increase my shutter speed, I have to press the little sync button here, a little H appears at the top with a lightning bolt. And now, if I press the same button, I can go way past my flash sync speed limit all the way up to 8,000th of a second. Okay. Not exactly the most slick demonstration, but you get the idea. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to use high speed sync flash. I could use ND filters, they would work. So uh, where are we going to be? We're going to be maybe 500th of a second. No flash. Here we go. Let's see where we are. I don't actually have to take a picture. I can see in the screen I'm 1.3 stops underexposed. Uh, so I can actually see it, but that's what it looks like. I'm going to put a little bit more in. Let's go for a thousandth of a second. Bearing in mind, I will get a bit of splash back from the flash on that background, no doubt. Okay, there you go. So now what I need to do is light Chloe to match. I can't use my flash meter because my flash meter doesn't do high speed sync metering. There are a few out there from Seconic that do. I don't have one. So instead we're trial and error. Let's guess one eighth power. One eighth power. Here we go. Middle of the road. One eighth power. It's more powerful than I thought the Flashpoint Explore 400. <laughs> uh, it's definitely going to be more like one thirty second power. Maybe in one sixty fourth. Wow we are pushing the power down. And it's really important that you set the shutter speed first, because if you adjust the shutter speed, it, it changes the flash output. Okay, so shutter speed first, and then set your flash to match. Let's go have a little look. Let's just see where we are. Beautifully in focus eyes on Chloe. 
nicely defocused background, but you can still see what it is. It's not that sort of blurry mush. It's definitely a background. Okay, Chloe. I'm just going to try and get it off my screen. There you go. I'm going to go vertical so we can actually see the props as well. It's quite a tight framing, Chloe, so it's down to your hips. There's an awful lot of electricity cables around here, which I have no idea whether they're live or not. They're not live. How no. do you know? Because I checked with um, Builder Steve. Ah. <laughs> and he said he put his fingers in them. And he's still with us, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but he's got that new spiky hairdo. That's, uh, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Someone's just actually said um, a photo ray, uh, although I will say that electric panel's got my OCD cringing lol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it, it is. It is. But, uh, <laughs> yes. Studio Steve's son is an electrician. Which is handy. Right, more worried is me clambering over the rubble. No one's worried about that, are they? No, we're not worried about no, that. That's fine. Not. There's a couple of um, questions. Yes. Uh, oh, well, right. a suggestion actually, you could feather the light, okay, the light yeah. to fall across um, Chloe, which will give a hint yeah. of light. Um, that is a that really good suggestion. Deo. I could have feathered the light away from the background. If you turn the light away from the background, your background is instinctively going to go darker. It won't become any less. Uh, sharp, but it will at least become darker. So I could feather the light away. Let's just see how that looks. It might need to adjust my exposure a little bit, but not much. Let's just see. Okay, so that's feathered it away, and the background has become indeed a little bit darker. That kind of worked. That was a good suggestion. I like that. Let's try a few like that. Okay. Okay, lovely. In fact, why don't we mix it up a little bit? How long have we got? Oh, go on, 10 minutes. Time flies, isn't it? Okay, let's give you a chair. Does a chair count as a prop? I'm going to say a chair's a prop. There we go. Definitely, it's all styling. But if your model changes height, you need to change your light height. We don't have to. In fact, there's not. That's, that's deliberately not. Nobody says you have to do something. Let's try it without. See what happens. Do you like the results? Terrific. Okay. Uh, oh, can't use my flash meter. I'm using high speed sync flash. I should get one that does that. I really should. Okay. Clambering over here. Here we go. The 40 mil is just a little bit too long. But hey, it's live. Yeah, love that. Okay, smash in. All right, we've got 10 minutes. We need to move you around to the door just to wrap it up. We have nine minutes. <laughs> Time flies. Oh, look. This is why we like working with Chloe. <laughs> right. Yeah, marvelous. Um, Thank you very much. Make life a lot easier. Okay, so we have a door. Everything is now in shade, so there's, there's a little tiny bit of sun at the top there, but everywhere I'm photographing is going to be in shade. Where do I want to put my light? Do I want to put my light on Chloe's left, uh, the right as we're looking at it, or the other way around? It's a, a good question, and there's a couple of answers to which side you might want to put the light on. The first one is to ask your subject. Some people Models often uh, have a preference on which side they like to have light falling on. So, Chloe, I know we've spoken about this before, but do you have a preference on which side you'd like the light? You like the light on that side? That's annoying, so I was going to put it on the other side. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, there's reasons you might want to put it on this side. The reasons you might want to put it on this side is the electricity panels here are probably not going to be in my shot. Um, so that is... Uh, something you might want to cover up with a light okay also it's going to put shade onto that side of chloe as well so if that's the side of the face she doesn't want to have lit some people have a preference on that you might want to sort of shade their face that way around but we'll go this way it's good we'll bring the light down here we go smashing superb there we go 
Oh, I forgot we had a microphone for Chloe as well. I could have given you the, the microphone. <laughs> OK, so uh, do we need to be doing high speed sync flash? I think the answer to that one is no. Uh, in fact, I would like the versatility. Oh, there's an interesting photograph. I'd like the versatility and another one. The versatility of a more uh, zoom lens. Yeah, they are. There's nothing, literally nothing to see because I didn't have a lens on the camera. <laughs> OK, so I can then switch back to my flash sync speed. 250th of a second. Do, 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 do. F, well, let's go for f5.6, then we've used a range of apertures. And let's see where we are. So let's turn the flash off, see what we get. No flash gives me not quite no picture. There's definitely something there, but it, it needs a bit of light. Let's throw a little bit of light into the scene. Okay, Chloe, I'm just going to turn the flash on. We're at f5.6. I need my flash meter to read f5.6. The second it does, I know I have the exact amount of light reaching Chloe as my camera is set to record. It's a long-winded way of saying I've got the exposure correct. Okay, here we go. Fantastic. Okay, that's not too bad, but we could do a little bit better. Five minutes. I can do better. I've got five minutes to do better. I'm going to try and do better by making the light a little bit softer. This is where my size of softbox is a little frustrating. I would definitely prefer at this moment a larger softbox. But you make do with what you got. What were your camera settings, please? Oh, yeah, good question. Here we go. I can throw them onto the screen. I can manually throw them onto the screen. There they are. How's that? Is that perfect for everybody? I think we got that, haven't we? Hang on. Wait for the camera to catch up. Oh. So my camera settings, my flash sync speed 250th of a second, my ISO f5.6, no, that's the aperture rather, and my ISO 200. So I'm trying to do three things at once. Uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, so I've moved the light closer. I should re-meter to get that to be correct. Ooh, my camera is suddenly telling me no picture. Oh, there we are. Hey, that's not too bad. We definitely have a little bit of a shady side and a lit side. I don't mind that the background's in focus on this. So we're gonna go with the suggestion earlier on, if you were with us earlier. We had a suggestion, put a fill light into the side, which is what we're going to do. A little bit of a separation light. Quick tip. Turn it on. There it goes. <laughs> All right. Nearly eight o'clock at night and I remembered to turn it on. I mean, it's been a long day. <laughs> there you go. How much light do you want to have in your fill light? The answer to that one in my mind is not too much. So it's on its own channel. I can set it to its own amount of light. I'm going to put it to one 128th power. Let's just see what it does. There we go. That's what it does, but it can be really hard to, to see what's actually happening. It's a fill light, but what is it doing? So the second you have more than one light in your scene, my top tip is to turn your key light off. So we come back here. OK, so I'm on B, which is the, the fill light. I'm going to go to A. And I'm just going to turn the whole thing off. Oh, it's backwards. It's really hard to do. OK, so that is off. It's not going to fire. Only the B light is going to fire. So we can see what it's going to do. Here we go. And it's just going to put a little bit of light. It is just a little kiss of light. And just to show you without the flash. It doesn't go beep because there's no flash. That's without the flash. Let's zoom in. That's with the flash. And you can see just a little kiss of light just into those shadows, just to lift them slightly. All right. And then the important bit, the bit I always forget, to turn the main light back on again. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, just pop that back on, and it's just reset all the lights. That's brilliant. 
that's live for you. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so annoying. I'm just going to set that up again. Here we go. And what am I shooting at? F5.6. It does help to remember. There we go. Alrighty, Chloe, here we go. Nice. Bring this in. I would ideally like to move that light. Could do with all these stones being moved out of the way if anyone's... Uh, We've got time just to move the... Uh, Give me five cabinet. minutes, I'll be with you. <laughs> We've got one I'm minute. busy at the moment. <laughs> Okay, we've got a minute left, so if you've got any last minute questions, this is your 60 seconds countdown, more or less. Uh, Jeff asked, uh, what model is the flash remote? Uh, the flash remote is the, hang on, uh, it's got duct tape on it. It is the Flashpoint R2 Pro. Flashpoint R2 Pro on that one. Okay. <coughs> That's nice. Chloe, do you want to bring this chair square onto me? And then you're going to lean in towards me. That's the way. If Chloe leans in, I need to move the light because she's literally leaned out of the light. Okay, that's great. Fantastic. And this background is weird. It's messy. It's not quite in keeping with the rest of the, the scene. But sometimes that works. And it's also got my softbox in the shot. <laughs> Love that. I'm going deliberately wide because you can always crop in but you can't crop out. And if you're gonna have a awful location included in your shot because it's in context, show it. Show the whole location. Yes, go in and do the tight stuff. But also remember to do the wide shots. Let's move around. Let's try different positions. I'm falling out the light. Right where we were. Okay, I think I'm pretty much there. So I've got one more really important shot to do. Literally last shot. Here we go. And I'm going to do it both with the flash and without the flash. Here we go. Fantastic. And those shots are important because you need them to know where you set your lights up, share them on social media, reminders of what you've been doing. Fantastic. Okay, there we go. Wow, that hour went by so fast. Uh, right, okay, Sam, have we got any questions? Are we good? No, yeah, you're pretty good, actually. Ooh. I have to say thank you to everyone for answering everyone else's questions. <laughs> It's really, really useful because they're all chatting amongst themselves and it's great. Really, really good community here. Um, yeah, you're doing really well. Stop smirking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I realised I was just stood it. I mean, I mean, come on. Can you move out of the way? Everyone it's, wants to see Chloe. It's basically, it? isn't it? And you can't blame them, really. So. <laughs> really, really good. Thanks to everyone. And thanks to um, Seth and Mary Irene as well in the background. Yay! And I know there's some, lots of other people helping Dream as well. Team. So thank you so much. Thanks, Adorama. We love you guys in the background. So, yeah, let me thank everybody that came along. Literally, we could not do these without you guys in the audience. So thank you very much. Thanks for Chloe to being awesome, Chloe. She's absolutely awesome. Uh, we had Freya on the Super Switcher. Give it up to Freya. And you can't see her or you, and, or, and, or, I don't know. You can't hear her. However, if you would like to see and hear her, you've got 58 minutes. Head over to Adorama XP on Twitch not on YouTube, on Twitch, and Freya is going to be gaming tonight. Um, actually, I don't know, what are you going to be gaming? Do you know? I've got, <laughs> that's reassuring. Yay. <laughs> so she's going to be gaming <laughs> uh, in around about an hour's time. I'll be there in the comments as well. Uh, so go check that out. And uh, Adorama on, on Twitch, Adorama XP is not just about gaming. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on there. So go check that out. Uh, Sam, on the comments, literally Sam couldn't do this without you because you are literally the driving force behind all this stuff. There you go, unseen, but uh, much appreciated. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. I'm Gavin Hoey, take care.